Hey everybody, Rick Maycumber here for NewsShooter.com and we are at the Red Rock Micro booth. This is NAB 2015 and I am with the Brian Valente. One and, only. and Brian has some serious stuff to show us. I've been waiting for this. Tell, tell me what you have. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, we've been working on this uh, technology for about the last um, three years. And in, in some ways I describe this as the avatar product. We had to wait about five years for the technology to catch up to do the things that we wanted it to do right. so that we could actually show you what we're about to show today. Uh, this is a new uh, product, it's called Halo. It is designed, it's a focus tracking system. And the problem we're trying to solve, of course, we all know that we're getting big sensors, we're getting uh, fast lenses, people are wanting to shoot in a very cinematic look. Um, but focusing now is trying to come to the forefront is a sort of big challenge and also a big creative opportunity. It's becoming more and more difficult, 4K, yeah. 6K, 8K. And it's also becoming more of the, the desired aesthetic, right? People want to shoot in shallow depth of field. So the question is like, how do we enable uh, the solution of, of solving focus but we want to do it in a way where it's like all the way from uh, amateurs or sort of the, the uh, enthusiasts who are just like, look, I just need you to do the focus for me, all the way up to professionals who are saying like, look, I'm a professional AC, I don't need you to do it for me, but I really need better tools so I can understand focus and be able to pull a little bit, a little bit better. You know, as we get in incredible high resolution, everyone's wanting to shoot wide open, that's the problem. And then there's sort of this huge mass of in between, which is not quite one and not quite the other. And you know, how do we solve a problem uh, that looks like that? And so, this halo does it? We hope so, we think so. So this is uh, the first part of the Halo. This is our um, new remote focus interface. It's, uh, it's actually a preview of our three channel interface. We have zoom, iris, and focus. As you can see, we have a nice knob here. Um, we have a beautiful interface we work very hard on. And not only does it give you information about uh, your distance scales, but also calculate your depth of field so you can see that I'm moving forwards and backwards. And that, it actually, that little band right there? Right. So, and of course, it's the third in front and two thirds in the back, roughly. It's calculating it. So, as I'm moving closer, the depth of field is actually shrinking. And if I adjust my iris, of course, it's going to adjust uh, the depth of field as mm -hmm. well. So, as a kind of a reference tool, already we're kind of getting a lot more information about what's going on. Now, where it gets really interesting is where we introduce Halo. This device that we can see in the front of the camera is called the Halo Explorer. It uses the same technology that's in autonomous cars for collision detection and avoidance. So you know it's real time and it's ultra responsive. And we've figured out a way to take that technology and actually do what we call scene mapping, intelligent scene mapping. So it actually is uh, sitting in the front of the camera and it's actually without any tabs or devices or special equipment mapping out what's happening in real time. So our lovely Larissa here, as she's gonna be walking around, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And you can see what's happened now with my interface is I see Larissa as a dot and she's moving about. And I also see my dart, dartboard back here. So as a reference tool, right, we're talking about people who just wanna see how to focus, I can actually move this. And as long as I am keeping her basically on the line, but preferably in the uh, depth of field, I can know that I'm gonna keep her in focus. Now, I don't have to use this knob. I can actually also use uh, my finger and actually just scrub through the focus on the interface. I personally prefer to do that. And again, it gets a little bit more interesting when we have another person coming in. So we'll just introduce Alex as our second folk. And you can see when somebody walks into the scene, it comes in, this lighter um, bit of the uh, interface is actually the angle of view of the lens. So I can see when they're inside and outside the lens. Mm -hmm. And again, very simple way to scrub between the different subjects. I can click on them. I can click back here. And as a tool for focusing, again, there's nothing automated about it, but it's a great reference tool on how to go about doing this, okay? Now, so let's say, let me interrupt for a minute. Let's say you wanted to do a pull focus from one to the other. How would you do sure. that with this? So, well, one of two ways. First of all, I can actually either just sort of put my finger here and slide it so I can control the direction and the movement and kind of the pacing of that, or I can just move it here, and when I want to uh, move to him, I can just, push it and it will snaps, go to it. Snaps, snaps to quickly. Him. Right. And you can actually control the ability in terms of the amount. We call it, it's a feature called artistry, but the um, kind of how fast and how much smoothness is being involved in that uh, specific pull. It's now, pretty amazing. Thank you. Now, wait, but wait, there's more. Um, what I want to show you is it gets very interesting because as Larissa is walking around, Halo is, the reason we call it Halo is because it's actually a verb. So I can actually tap on her, and now it's actually going to track her and focus on her in real time. And you can see it's not being confused by Alex, but she's moving around. 
I can actually click and focus on Alex now. One of the things that you'll see is Alex walks um, forward and he's gonna walk actually outside the angle of view of the camera, but he's still gonna stay in focus. So as he moves into the angle of camera and stops in front of the camera, you see that he's actually in focus. So we're not limited in terms of what the camera can actually see. We can actually cue people in terms of a focus off camera and then be able to do that. Now, one thing I, we mentioned before is this notion that, well, there's autofocus and then there's like better tools for manual focus. But a lot of people kind of want a combination of both. And the question is really, how do we do that? Mm -hmm. So what we can do is I'm, you know, here I'm uh, haloed on Larissa. I can actually take this and when I drag my finger, it will actually take over manual focus. I can move it up. I can focus on the screen. or sorry, the dartboard. Uh, I can move it back to Alex. And when I let go, it's going to re-engage uh, Larissa as uh, the focus tracking person that's being haloed. So the idea that we can move seamlessly between uh, manual focus and automated focus and do it in a way where it's not, it doesn't jerk the camera around, you don't have to sort of keep track of where the um, knob is, now makes it a really uh, actually very effective way to move between automated focus and manual focus. So this is the halo system, you know, currently we're showing it to work uh, on our remote system. The interface you see actually on the left side, you'll notice shows both a live interface and also an overlay that includes all the Halo information. That's a portion of something we have called Halo Cast, so that if you're pulling focus from a monitor, you still have all that reference information available to you. Um, a lot of folks have asked us about availability and pricing. So this is a preview. This is the, literally the first day we've shown it publicly. Um, it's probably going to be available uh, later in the year. And we haven't finalized the pricing. There's a lot of components. There's questions about packaging, but our aim is somewhere in the two to five thousand dollar range to have this work. Um, the range of this system is a, we think it's going to be about 100 to 120 feet. And again, it works in any type of lighting situation. Can work in darkness. Can work in bright light. Can work indoors, outdoors. The cameras moving about. Mm -hmm. We did a great demo on YouTube uh, where we actually put it on a gimbal and it you know performed beautifully. So. We really try to make it not only a system that works across that range, but removes a lot of limitations we've seen of other people trying to address the same issue. And is this unit also portable? Can you walk around with this battery operated or does it yeah. have to be this is, physically so this connected? Is, no, 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 this is actually, everything that's happening right now is all wireless. We just kind of have this um, battened down in terms of trade show and trying to make sure people don't walk off with it. But it's a completely wireless functional system. So we wanted to show it in the context of a remote focus. It's not a technology exercise. This is a real product. We're actually demonstrating it here in real time. And uh, you know, we're very excited about where it's going to be headed. Yeah. So this really could be a great tool for gimbals. Yeah, I think, so like I said, uh, you know, if people are doing uh, either enthusiasts or people who are just like single operators and they need some way to have focus handled for them, this is a great tool to do that. If you're a professional AC or somebody who's like, look, I just know how to pull focus, I need better information, show me the depth of field, show me the information about my lenses, it's a great way to do it. But there's all this in-between stuff that happens of like, well, for this shot maybe I want autofocus, but for all the other shots I want, you know, I'm gonna do my, my regular job. I think it's a really important thing to realize that we all have varying levels of expertise and depending on your level of expertise, but also the shot, you now have a whole sort of breadth of opportunity in terms of what you want to work with. Well, that is quite amazing. Uh, that's the Halo system from Red Rock Micro. Brian, thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks, guys. You explained for it on. very well. And um, this is Rick Maycumber for NewShooter.com, NAB 2015. On to the next booth.